why don't you invite someone to that day and it's going to be a great day. Uh, but right now, church, I'm so excited for the Word. I hope you're ready online as well. We're going to hear the Word of God. So could we please be upstanding as we honour Pastor Paul and honour the Word of God right now. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. You can be seated. Thank you, Sinead. Wonderful. So good. Good to get into the Word of God this morning. Hey, do you enjoy worship today? Hope you enjoyed it online as well. Welcome to everyone online, wherever you are right now. It's great to have you with us today as well. I love that song, God of Revival. It's a, it's a declaration over our city, isn't it? And uh, I just love what God is doing there, which is powerful. And, uh, but we are going to jump into the Word uh, and launch into this Upper Room series. But before we do that, just have a quick announcement I wanted to bring today. I'd like to Mark and Rachel, if you can come up, please, and Pastor Kate as well. Um, Mark and Rachel are actually getting married next Saturday, which is really cool. Yeah, it's wonderful. So good. And uh, we just honour them so much. And uh, I just know that, uh, you know, Mark has been leading uh, and uh, the Boost ministry team for uh, this year and did Connect team before that. Rachel's been doing an internship this year as well with City Edge Leadership College, so rep that, which is great. So... Station at the back. Yeah, yeah, which is cool. But, uh, you know, these guys are, are great and a uh, great couple as well. And uh, we're stoked for you to be getting married. Um, but something that we wanted to announce as well today is that uh, at the end of this year, uh, Mark and Rachel will actually be moving north uh, to our join our Innisfil location uh, with Pastor Travis and Grace as well and helping them there, which is really cool. And uh, they've just felt on their heart to, to do that. And uh, so they, they, they'll be here till the end of this year and then they're going to go and join. So same family, just a different room. And, uh, and so, you know, we're, we're excited for you guys and excited for your wedding next Saturday, which is cool as well. Uh, but what's going to be happening here is, um, is Pastor Kate is going to be uh, overseeing our kids' ministry and raising team and leaders in there, um, which is really great. And, uh, you know, uh, the thing is she'll oversee for about six to 12 months and uh, just to see team leaders raise up in there and uh, look forward into the future as well. But I want to let Kate share a bit more about that. Great. Awesome. Yeah, well, Paul just asked me to share uh, just for a couple of minutes to you guys. Um, but we obviously really felt in this season that God wanted us to invest into kids' ministry in a very specific way. Uh, you know, I know God wants to move in the lives of our kids. We've had words over this church for kids' ministry over our lives. Um, I have seen visions of kids encountering the love of God. I've seen visions of kids, um, you know, really receiving prophetic words and beginning to understand the call of God on their life or that God loves them and that He has a future for them. And I believe that this is something that God wants to awaken uh, in greater capacities over the next 12 months. You know, children are a family's legacy, that is true. But children are also the legacy of the Kingdom of God. They are the legacy of the local church. And I know that as we invest in this area in the way that God is leading us to, that um, there is a greater harvest that He is wanting to bring to their lives, but also the harvest that He is wanting to bring through their lives in now, in this year, but also in every year as they grow up throughout their lives. And church, this is the way that we can actually transform cities is by the way that we invest into our kids. And you know, someone reminded me the other day about um, one of our leaders or a lot of our leaders actually grew up through kids ministry, but one in particular was invited by a friend to attend youth, uh, to attend kids ministry, right? And he's actually a leader in our music team right now and he got saved and then he invited his parents along and they got saved. And uh, what that meant is that the legacy have changed. He's now had children. So the legacy of his life, his parents' life, his children's life has changed and he continues to use the giftings on his life to invest into the kingdom of God. Church, this is why we do kids ministry. This is why we do what we do. And uh, you know, some of you guys here, you have felt the prompting on your heart to use the gifts and talents on your life to invest into this demographic. I would say to you that I wonder if the time is now. I wonder if it's the time to say yes now. We are walking into such a great time where we're gonna see just such a move of God in our kids' ministry. So if that is you, I'd love to hear from you. Come and talk to me after church. Uh, you know, we're raising a generation of world changers. So join a team and build a legacy and uh, let's see what God's gonna do in this area of our church next year. 
Great. Hey, let's just pray for Mark and Rachel. Hey, Father, we thank you, God, for your grace upon them. Thank you as they're getting married next week. You're anointing upon that. Uh, Lord, I just thank you, God, for their, their move to the north to be a support to Pastor Trav and Grace. And your grace is going to be upon that in a big way. And we thank you for that, God. And we thank you for here. Lord, our kids' ministry growing, expanding. And uh, Lord, we're seeing leaders raise up. And we just thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Bless you. Hey. Awesome. So good. Well, we're going to dive into this word. And uh, Upper Room uh, is actually uh, all about the fact that uh, Acts 2 was where the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost. And, uh, and so from that point, what happened was is God just really moved by the power of the Holy Spirit through the early church to see impact on the world. And, uh, and so what we want to do over this series is that Upper Room is really about the work of the Holy Spirit and working with the Holy Spirit in our lives. How we're going to do that is we're going to dive into some stories from Acts and uh, different stories of how, um, you know, the different characters and people and what God did in their lives, how they worked with the Holy Spirit, you're going to see God move in their world. And uh, how many know the Holy Spirit is always at work? He's always doing things, he's always moving in our lives. And, uh, and we need to be switched on to the work of what God is doing in our lives. And uh, so let's take it here. We're going to uh, look at Acts chapter 12. Uh, you know, it's a story with Peter, the leader of the first church. He actually gets arrested. And, uh, and, and the, the gospel spreading throughout, you know, Jerusalem and, and, and beyond on that as well. But we see that he gets arrested by King Herod Agrippa. And King Herod had actually had the Apostle James killed uh, not too long before that. And then they found Peter and arrested him. So here we have, take the story here, is that Peter is going to go on trial the next day and he could actually be killed as well. So he's in the lockup for the night. So he's arrested. He's chained between two soldiers. And uh, we take the story here in Acts chapter 12, verses 6. It says, The night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep fastened with two chains between two soldiers. Others stood guard at the prison gate. My first key today in working with the Holy Spirit is the power to hold. The power to hold. I mean, no, there is a power to hold when we're waiting for God to move. When we're waiting for God to do something in our lives, sometimes it's a little bit, you get a little bit antsy, don't you? You can just waiting and, and waiting for God to move in your life. Sometimes there can be fear, concern, worry. All those things can come in when you're not knowing what the outcome is going to be. But there is a power in the Holy Spirit to hold in the times when we need to. You know, I remember when I was seven years old, 1986, went through Cyclone Winifred that hit the town of Abinda where I grew up with my family. And, uh, and, and it, was a, it was a Category 4 cyclone that hit. Who's ever been in a cyclone? Yeah, if you're, on the, if you're on the line right now, just put it in the chat. If you've been in a cyclone, you'll know. Uh, but, you know, it, it's a, it, when you go through a cyclone, it's, it's just crazy. I mean, we, we were living in this kind of smaller house, five kids. Um, and uh, and this, this cyclone hit, and it was that powerful, it was rattling the entire house. And, uh, and so at one point, it hit at nighttime, uh, I, we had these massive big French glass doors at the front of the house and I went up to these glass doors because they were bowing in and out with the wind and I'm standing there touching the glass as it's bowing in and out and I said, Mom, look at this. And I was like, get away from that door. <laughs> I still remember that. She was so, she was really freaking out. Yeah, pulled me away from the door and we, we, we had to sleep in Mum and Dad's house, uh, room for the night and, uh, and, and so we're in there, no one's sleeping. No, see, it's just crazy. The house is shaking, rattling. And the eye of the storm comes over. And my dad had heard the shed rattling out the back. And he thought he was going to lose the roof. So dad gets out in the eye of the storm, which is still as. And he starts nailing the roof down in the middle of this storm. Like he's on the roof. The wind starts picking up again. It's blown. He's not done yet. And my dad's name's Frank. So my mom is at the bottom of the shed yelling out. Us kids could hear her, Frank, Frank, get off that shed. Get off the shed now. You know, and Dad's like, no, I'm not getting off. I'm not losing this roof. You know, so he's nailing this roof down. And uh, to his great credit, he never got blown off and he didn't lose his shed roof. So he was, he was happy. Yeah. And uh, comes back inside. No one sleeps a wink for the night. It's like, it's just crazy. And, um, and so it just made me think about Peter. And, and here's Peter 
Like he's, he's going on trial the next day. There's stress, there's pressure. He could be killed as well. He knows, you know, one of his, one of his other fellow apostles has already been killed. All right, so, so can you imagine the stress he's under? Can you imagine the pressure he's under, the fear of not knowing what's gonna happen the next day? But he's, he's not stressed at all. He's asleep. He's out cold. How do you sleep in that stress? How do you sleep in that pressure? But he is just catching Z's, counting sheep, who knows? He's fast asleep. He's out, all right? And, uh, and, and I, I looked at this and I read this, this passage and I'm like, how could you possibly be asleep? I mean, I'd be wide awake, you know, in this moment, but he's asleep. And so I look at this and I think, you know, there's a great peace when you really are working with the Holy Spirit. There's a great peace when, when you've done everything that you can do and the whole church at that time in the city were, were meeting in a house and they were praying for Peter so they weren't idle, they weren't doing nothing, they were praying. And, and here's Peter, he's like, well, I've done everything I can do. The rest, I've just got to let God do what He can do. All right, so he, he just came to the, to the realisation, if God's calling me home, I'm going home. If He's not, He's got more for me to do. So he, he's at rest, so he falls fast asleep. And I love that the rest that you can find is out of 2 Timothy 1.7. It's a powerful thing. It says this, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So He hasn't given us a spirit of fear. So fear is not from God. Fear is not from God. It's not how God works. There is a, a fear of God that's reverence and awe and wonder of His power and His, and, and His grace and who He is. But there is, a, there is a fear that's not from God, all right? And so, so what it means is, is that if, if, if God has not given us a spirit of fear, He has given us a spirit of power. He has given us a spirit of love. And He has given us a sound mind through His presence. All right, so here Peter, in this moment, he's of a sound mind state. All right, he's okay. That's why he has rest in the midst of a storm. He has, he has peace in the trial. And, and so he's able to sleep in this moment because he knows that, hey, I don't know the outcome. Because it's not about whether you know the outcome. It's about who you know, not about what's gonna happen. All right, and Peter, his faith is, and his heart and his mind is fixed on Jesus in this moment. It's a knowing. It's a knowing that God is in control. And see, we, sometimes we're like, well, unless I know the outcome, I'm not going to have peace. And God's like, no, no, you got it back to front. you got it reversed. It's not about knowing the outcome. It's about knowing that I'm in control. It's knowing that you can trust in me and that my outcome will come to pass. And so when we trust that, it's about if I've done, if you've done all you can. See, here's the truth here. If we've done everything we can before God, then we've got to trust God's got this. All right? If I've been obedient and done all God needs me to do, then God has got this. And see, as a Christian, it doesn't matter how long you've been saved, we always have to be reminded of this, don't we? We've got to be reminded in our lives because sometimes there, there can be things that happen that, that do cause fear do cause worry and concern in our lives. And we can go, man, I, I don't know what's gonna happen. And, and God's saying, hey, don't use those moments in your life to step back from God. Use those moments in your life to take a closer, deeper step toward God, toward Jesus. Let your heart open up so that you can know what it means to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, to know that sound mind feeling. I mean, there's something powerful about being in a state where you have no clue what's going to happen, but you just know God's got it. It's just a knowing. It's a knowing. And I'll tell you what, that knowing doesn't come outside of relationship. It doesn't come outside of prayer. It doesn't come outside of the Word of God. It doesn't come outside of really going deeper in God, into the presence of God. And see, you, you see a Peter that has a sound mind. Why? Because his relationship where it need, is where it needs to be. He's already solid in his faith. He's solid in his walk with God. That's why he's catching Z's and he's fast asleep, all right? And so there is a great knowing, there's a great peace and there's a power to hold. And that holding part of it, sometimes we just want things to happen. How many know we live in an instant society? I mean, we're in, we want our microwave meals, we want Maccas in 60 seconds, and if it takes any longer, we're like, what are you doing? What's wrong with you guys? Like, we just want 
we want a quick staff, but, but how many know that God doesn't work to our timing? He doesn't work to our schedule. He doesn't work to our timing. He works to his own, but his schedule is far better than our own. Far better, and we can trust that, and that's where we can find peace. Even though we don't know the outcome, we can trust that we know a God that is in control in every moment, and there is a power to hold. I don't know whether there's people here today, maybe you feel like you've been in a holding season in your life. Maybe you've been holding in certain areas in your life, and you've been saying, God, how long? How long do I need to wait for this miracle? How long until this happens in my marriage? How long before this happens in my business? How long, God, do I need to wait before the breakthrough comes through? I wanna tell you, it's not like God actually moves in your life when the breakthrough comes. God's moving in your life right now. Right now. Because God's, God's making you stronger, taking you deeper. He's taking you into greater places of faith and trust and love and understanding of who God is. He is bringing the Christ out of you. That's what he's doing. And sometimes we, we can feel we, we try and skip that process because it's not comfortable, is it? It doesn't feel nice when you're waiting for something. But God is doing his beautiful work inside of us oftentimes and we're waiting for a miracle. So don't negate the God process in those moments. Allow God to do what God is doing. Be at peace in those moments and to say, because oh, I don't know timing. I don't know the timing of God for your life and I don't know the timing of God for my life. But I know when God is ready, he can move in the way that he wants to. And that leads me to my second point. If there is a power to hold, there is also a power to move as well. A power to move, a power to act when God wants you to act. Acts 12, 7 to 10 says, Suddenly there was a bright light in the cell, and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side to awaken him and said, Quick, get up. And the chains fell off his wrists. Then the angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals. And he did. Now put on your coat and follow me. The angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel, but all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was actually happening. And they passed the first and second guard post and came to the iron gate leading to the city. And this opened for them all by itself. So they passed through and started walking down the street. And then the angel suddenly left him. How awesome is that? Pretty powerful moment. He thinks he's dreaming. All right, he thinks he's having a vision. He doesn't realize this is actually happening until he gets out onto the street and the angel disappears. But I love the power of this, that God has the power to hold and know a sound mind in seasons we need to hold, but God has the power to move when He wants to. And oftentimes, you can find this with God, is that when God wants to move, God often tries, He moves quickly, doesn't He? He can move fast on some things. The angel gets there and whacks Him. You know, whacks him on the side, maybe with a, I don't know, maybe he had his sword out or something. Whack, you know, whacks him and then says, quick, get up, get up. And I love this is that, is that you know, when, when Peter wakes up with a start and, and, he, and he, as soon as he focuses in on what God is doing in this moment, it wasn't while he's, he was asleep that the chains fell off. It was when he focused in on what God was doing. That's when the chains fell off his hands and feet and he got up. He got up, he got dressed. And he, and he started moving with the angel. And I love that when God wants to act, He can often act quickly. Sometimes when you've been in a holding season in your life, it's about knowing when God wants to move, He can move fast at times. I'm not saying He's always going to, but He can move fast. And like I said, I don't know the timing of God for your life. I don't know the timing of God for my life. But it's about trusting that when God wants to move, He's gonna move in a powerful way. He's gonna do what He needs to do in those moments. And we need to really put our faith and our trust and our life in Him and knowing that He can move. And I, I just love that it was like the, this, this moment of God's great timing. And so no matter how long you've waited for a miracle, I wanna say this, be ready. Be ready. Be ready because God can move in any moment. Be ready for what God wants to do. Um, Because I I found, I've talked to people at times when they've they've waited a long time for a miracle and I ask this question and say, hey, are you still praying for that? And sometimes people are just, it's just been so long that they pull back from prayer. They pull back from even believing that God can move. Hey, can I remind you again, maybe that's been the case for your life. Can I remind you, start to pray again. Start to believe God again. Because when God wants to move, He can move fast. He can move quickly in your life, but we have to trust that He is in control and that He can move. See, in 2020, there's been a lot of unknowns, hasn't there? A lot of unknowns. Maybe online, there's been a lot of unknowns for your life. But it doesn't matter about the unknowns. It's about who you know. 
It's about who you know. No matter what's coming, no matter what's happening, no matter what happens, no matter who gets elected, all right? And we want to trust God that He's in control. All right, and he's in control. Even in our, our state of Queensland, we know that whoever's in power, whether it's Liberal, Labor, or whoever, it doesn't matter. Jesus is still on the throne. Amen. And we're going to be praying for our leaders no matter who they are. Amen. There's a, there can be a lot of unknowns at times, but when God wants to move, we got to be ready. So the next thing that happens is in Acts 12, 12 to 16 with Peter. When he realized this, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many were gathered for prayer. He knocked at the door of the ga- in the gate and a servant girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognised Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone, Peter is standing at the door. You're out of your mind, they said. Uh, when she insisted, they decided it must be his angel. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking and when they finally opened the door and saw him, they were amazed. Now here's the key. Here's the church. They weren't sitting idle. They were praying. They were there. They were believing God. They needed a miracle for Peter to be released that night. And they're praying together. And I, I love this picture is that Rhoda goes to the door because she hears the door knock and hears his voice and runs back. Ever been that excited that you didn't actually do what you were supposed to do? And it runs back. You know, it's Peter, it's Peter. Nah, you're out of your mind. That's crazy. You know, and eventually they go and open the door and there's Peter. See, sometimes as a Christian, you can get so caught in a holding pattern that when the miracle happens, you're not even aware that it's going on. Sometimes you get so caught up, it's like, oh, well, just just believing, just waiting, just waiting for God to move. And God's like, I've already moved. I've already done the miracle and I brought it straight home to you. And so the, the miracle was knocking at the door. It's knocking at the door. And Rhoda's like, he's at the door. Nah, you're crazy. Nah, nah, nah. God's, God hasn't done that. He hasn't moved yet. Oh, no, no. I'm not sure if that God does things like that. Nah, nah. It can't be. It can't be. No, no. The miracle's at the door. It's knocking. It's knocking. It's knocking. And see, a lot of times when God, God gives us the power to hold, but He also awakens us, as we're singing this morning, with the power to move, power to act. The power of God had already moved. They just needed to celebrate it. They just needed to receive it in their lives. It takes faith to receive a miracle. Do you know that? It takes faith. It's got, it takes you opening up your heart and saying, God, I'm ready. I'm ready for what you're doing right now. Someone could be believing for healing in their body. And it takes that continued faith to say, God, I know that you can do this. I know that you can move. Maybe to act today, to move on what God is saying for some people here, it could be in your marriage, in your family. Maybe acting could be taking those steps that God's been moving on both your hearts for a long time. It could be to get restoration. It could be to get counsel. It could be some practical steps to get things right. Maybe for someone else, it could be uh, in your in your business and your, you've been holding for a long time and maybe God's been saying, hey, I'm ready to move. I just need you to do these things. I need you to employ that person. I need you to sign that contract. I need you to do that thing that I'm asking you to do. And sometimes we can be afraid and we can be holding back because we're unsure of what could come. Oh God, what if it doesn't work out? What if it doesn't come through the way that you said? But see, when God is in it and you know you've heard God and you know that He's backing that, sometimes we've got to have the faith to know that, hey, maybe the I've been holding a long time, but maybe God wants to move right now. He wants to act on this situation. See, for all of us, we could all be in different places in, in our lives. Some of us could be holding for things and some of us could be in a place right now just like the church was in that home and the miracle's waiting, but it takes the step to actually go up to the door and go, you know what, I'm gonna do my part in this. I'm gonna do my part in what the miracle takes. Could be anything in your life. Fill in the blank of what the Holy Spirit could be pressing on your life right now. Maybe it's to be a witness to somebody else. Maybe it's been a long time since you shared your faith and maybe God's saying, I want you to, I want you to talk to that person at work. I want you to act on something. I want you to step out in faith right now. Hey, it could be anything in our lives, but God is involved. I want you to know, it's not like God is separated and, and from every single thing we're doing. God's even in the practical things. He's at work with you every day. 
He's, when, he's there at the gym with you. When you're at the gym, He's at your local coffee shop. He's everywhere, all the time. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. He, you ca- we carry Him with us. And He's involved in everything. And I, I wanna say today, let's let Him be involved so much more. Let Him be involved in our lives. So there is the power to hold. There is the power to move and to act on the things God is saying as well. But no matter what it is, it's about working with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, let's close our eyes today. Thank you, Jesus. I wanna ask today, maybe online today, there's some people that have joined us now and there's people here today. And maybe you don't know Jesus for yourself. Maybe you've never said a prayer to accept Jesus into your life. And we wanna give you an opportunity and encourage you in this moment now because what I'm preaching about today is the fact that God actually wants to be involved in our lives. God actually has more for our lives, blessing, hope, life, future, love, all those things that He wants us to move with Him together. And God has a plan for your life today. And maybe you've come with a family or a friend or, or you've just rocked up, you saw us online and you're here today, or maybe you saw this on Facebook or YouTube and you just clicked on this and you have joined us right now online. I'm so glad you're here. So glad you're with us today. But I wanna let everybody know today, whether it's here or online, that God loves you, God knows you, and God is calling to you today. He's calling to your life. Because not only is it about the fact that God knows your life, God wants you to know Him. He wants you to know Him. God wants to start a journey, a relationship with your life. And life is so much better when it's done with God than without Him. And the greatest and quickest way to God is to accept Jesus Christ into your life, to say yes to Jesus today and pray a prayer. And if you wanna do that today, I want you to, as eyes are closed across this auditorium, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand to say, hey, I need Jesus in my life. I, I, wanna, be a, I wanna start this journey with Jesus today. Maybe you're here today and you need to make a recommitment, a rededication to Jesus. As you know, you've stepped back from your relationship with God. Maybe you need to recommit today. If that's you, lift your hand today to say yes to Jesus. If that's you, lift your hand. Say yes to Him today. He loves you. He has a future for your life. Life is so much better with Jesus than without Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're gonna pray this prayer together. And I'm gonna pray these words. And I want, if you're online, if you wanna pray this with me, please join with me and pray this prayer with me today. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I ask You to come into my heart Forgive me of my sin and my past. I accept You today as my Saviour and my Lord from this day forward. I am born again into Your family. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen. Awesome. Hey, you know, I just wanna say today, if there are people here and you did pray that prayer for the first time, Pastor Nick's just gonna share some next steps in a few moments from now. If you're online, hey, we would love to help you in any way we can as well with this journey of knowing Jesus. And why don't we stand to our feet? We're gonna sing back through some of God of revival again. Let's sing, hey. Come awake in the city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God, of revival, pour it out. Sing that again. Come awake in your people. Come awake in your people. Come awake in the city. Oh God, of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. Out of your mind, sing it again. Oh. 
Thank you, Jesus, today. Lord, I thank You for those here today that maybe that have been holding for a miracle for a long time for something. I pray that You empower them today by Your Spirit and Your grace. Lord God, there is a power to hold. There is a power to have peace in the midst of all sorts of situations, to know You greater and to rely on You in a stronger way. And I thank You today, Holy Spirit, that God, pour out Your presence right now in that power to hold. For anyone here today that's holding for a miracle. Lord, I pray for those here today that maybe, God, You're saying that uh, the step of faith, God, it could be that, that just that one step in front of us, God. And I thank You right now that, God, whether that's in business or family or, or in marriage or in life, in any way, God, I thank You, Lord. Help us not to be fearful, but God, to act on the things that You're saying. Lord, to move forward and to be bold and courageous, God, at times. Lord God, when we know that, God, You are in this, God, because a lot of times that fear can stop us from moving forward. But God, fear is not from God. Fear is not from You. And I pray that we would walk with the power of, of love, the Spirit of love, the Spirit of power and of a sound mind. And I thank You for Your presence over us right now. God, to just walk with You, Holy Spirit. Help us, God, over this series as well to get into a deeper relationship of walking with the Holy Ghost. We thank You for that today in Jesus' Name. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Give, let's give Jesus a clap, hey. Amen. Amazing. So good. Can we just honour Pastor Paul for that word as well? Come on, that was phenomenal. So good. Come on, your miracle is at the door. Just open the door. God is moving. Hey, if you did happen to pray that prayer, anyone online or here in the auditorium, uh, then we encourage you, our Connect Car is the best place where we can help you take your next step on this amazing journey with Jesus. There'll be details on the screen right now because we wanna help you uh, on all the things that God has in store for your life. It's such an incredible journey with Jesus. So uh, we think, have things like Alpha, we wanna get you a Bible. Uh, we have our amazing life groups. There's just so much. Um, so please fill out that connect card and say, I have decided uh, this morning, which is so good. But this morning, church, we're gonna go out praising God. Hey, why don't you stick around, grab a coffee with someone. Maybe you need a, I don't know, bottle, uh, bottle the jug. Uh, you need to boil the jug again at home. Uh, but we're gonna go out praising God. Have an amazing week and we will see you next week. Arise, my soul. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you next week at 10 a.m. We'll see you then.